Hello and welcome to another episode of Earthworks Hub. I'm your host, Ivan Olvik. Today, we're going to be talking about automation and in particular, uh, machine control. So um, a lot of people have different terms for it. They call it GPS, machine control, all these sort of things. So today, we're going to clear up some of that stuff. We're going to talk about what it is, the benefits of it, the future. And I have someone here from C.R. Kennedy that's going to explain everything for us. So, Nick, welcome to the program. Thanks, Ivan. How are you? Great to be here. Oh, I'm very good, thanks. Yeah, thanks for thanks for joining us. Um, so, yeah, like I said, we're going to obviously pick your brain a little bit about machine automation, or or mm-hmm. you know, there's multiple terms for it, but um, machine control in particular. Um, before we get into that, though. It's probably good to to get to know you a little bit. So, can you just give us a bit of a a history on, I suppose, yourself and the, and the company you work for and what you do there? Yeah, sure. Um, my name is Nick. Um, thanks for the introduction. Um, I work for CR Kennedy. I am the national manager for the machine control division. So, CR Kennedy is the exclusive distributors for Leica Geo Systems. Um, and hexagon heavy construction equipment for the Australian market. Uh, CR Kennedy um, was appointed sole distributors in 2001 for um, for Leica Geo Systems, and part of that portfolio includes uh, machine control. So uh, Leica Machine Control um, has been in the market for the Australian market for around 20 years now. Uh, but we've really seen a, a massive growth and um, huge demand for it in the last sort of um, five to ten years, you could say. Mm, right. And um, what about yourself? Like, how have you? How long have you been with these guys? So I've been with Sarah Kennedy for seven years now. Um, my background is uh, is actually nothing to do with machine automation or um, or surveying. Um, in my previous previous life, you could say, I was actually a pilot um, working in aviation. So uh, pilot for, for more than 10 years, uh, both in Australia and New Zealand, um, where I needed a um, bit of a career change, a uh, bit of a lifestyle change, and um, the opportunity at South Kennedy came up. Um, they were a little bit reluctant to take me on at the start because... Uh, uh, you know, with no experience or, or not coming from um, a surveying background, but um, picked it up very, very quickly, um, ran with it. Um, we were very successful uh, in Victoria here, um, where uh, I moved to moved into managing the, the Victorian team and now um, now the national manager for, for Australia. Wow. And- so CR Kennedy services all of Australia, not, not just Victoria then, is it? Correct. So CR Kennedy is a family-owned business. Um, we've been ex- in existence since uh, 1934. So we're actually celebra- celebrating our 90th year this year. Um, family run. Um, we're still family run. Um, the Kennedy family are very much involved in the day-to-day operation of the business. Um we have offices in uh, in every state um, except for the Northern Territory. So offices in Hobart, Tasmania. Uh, our head office is in Melbourne, um, Adelaide, Perth, uh, Brisbane, uh, Cairns, uh, Sydney. And we also have satellite offices in uh, Port Macquarie and... Um, and Newcastle, so really good exposure and uh, you know, really good coverage across Australia. Yeah, well, I never, never knew they were that big. Jeez, that's pretty big. I suppose before we go too far, um, can you just give us a bit of a rundown of what machine control is? You know, like what, what does it actually mean or for someone that's never sort of uh, dealt with that stuff? So, yeah, you're quite right in saying at the start, um, there's a lot of different terminology for it. So... Uh, machine control, uh, GPS, uh, machine automation, semi-automatic, um, fully automatic, um, TPS, total station, UTS. There's lots of different terminology, but effectively what uh, machine automation is, is um, 
us being able to put um, very specialised equipment onto almost 95% of all construction machinery and being able to give that machinery guidance to a specific model. So as an example, if you're building a road, um, you're, you're going to use a grader. Um, and that, that road needs to conform to, uh, to tolerances and, um, and to you know, government approvals and whatnot. So the best way to get those tolerances is by using machine automation um, in controlling the grader to grade to a specific grade. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose. Um, and it probably, probably eliminates uh, the need for, you know, the old string lines and people there, you know, dipping with their tape measures and, and using the old, uh, dumpies, we call them, or, you know, the oh, old levels. Absolutely. I mean, you can imagine the amount of time that's saved in, um, in using machine guidance. And it's not only time saved in, in putting down the material correctly, but the amount that you save in rework as well. Um, effectively, uh, there is no rework because you have, uh, you've done the design, well, you've done the, um, the construction as per the design that the surveyors have given you. So, yeah, extremely beneficial, um, not only for, for time saving, but also safety measures as well. So, A lot of times there's, there's talk about for operators that um, work with GPS machines, don't know how to dig, they, can, they can't dig without using GPS if, if that's what they've learnt on. Do you think there's any truth in that or do you think like um, you still need to use some of your skill along with that? Like it doesn't do everything, does it? Oh, absolutely. Um, there's a little bit of truth in that when it comes to graders. So a grader is a, is, a, is a machine that we can automate and control the blade. With an excavator, um, traditionally and typically, I would say 90% of the excavators out there using machine automation um, still require the operator to you know, control, the, control the boom, control the stick, the bucket and the tilt, etc. Um, there are some out there now that uh, have the ability for semi-automatic, so therefore all the operator needs to do is pull back on the stick and then uh, the machine system will actually control um, the tilt and the bucket and so forth for you. But you're never going to use that system um, for, for, your, for everyday digging. You would only ever use that for final trim or if you're doing batter work or if you're um, you know, filling in a trench, backfilling, and you're putting that last little bit of backfill through where you want to make sure that you, you get the correct level. But um, and, and, and at the end of the day, the operator still needs to know how to operate the machine. They still need to dig. Uh, and they still need to grade depending on what application that they're doing. And how, how does it actually work? Like what does, what gives the, um, the machine, the data or how does it actually work and tell it how deep you've got to go and where, where does it get the information from? Do you need a SIM card? Does it come from the satellite? Like where, where does it come from? Yeah. So you've got two ways of controlling uh, machinery, either via GPS or via a robotic total station. Uh, most common uh, specifically for excavators would be for GPS. So uh, think about like the GPS in your car. Uh, it will tell you to turn left in 200 metres. And the reference point that uh, the car is referring to there is it's uh, probably its computer inside it. So with an excavator, you, you, you wire it up and you install uh, bucket sensors, stick sensor, a uh, boom sensor, a uh, tilt sensor, and a body sensor. So using the GPS, uh, using the computer of the system, um, you, it, it knows where the bucket is, and it knows where the bucket edge is. So um, the GPS system knows where it is, so using a 3D model that a surveyor, can, that a surveyor produces, you can dig to that model. So not only uh, is it telling you how close or what you need to dig to, the tolerance for the system is, let's call it plus or minus 15, 20 mil. Wow, that's, that's pretty close. Very, yeah. very close, yeah. Yeah. And like you say that, you know, if you're spreading um, craft rock or, or capping along a road or something with a grader, 
that 15 mil across, you know, 400 meters is um, a, a big saving of material if you can get it within 15 mil, you know? Well, that's right. And I mean, if, you know, reference in the grader there, if you're, um, if you're laying, you know, class one, class two, um, you know, 15 mil is, is, let's call it acceptable. But um, if you're running um, CT, uh, then, you know, using a robotic total station, you can get that down to, say, between zero and three mil. So accuracy wow. is very, very fine with your, with your final layer of CT there. And, um, you yeah, as you say, over, over, let's say, a five or a 10 kilometre stretch of road, that could be, um, you know, hundreds of tonnes worth of, uh, of material. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, big savings, not just like I was saying earlier, you know, string lines and, and labourers and things. It's actually material cost savings and time time for that machine as well. So, that's yeah, right. big saving. Yeah. 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 So let's just say um, I've decided I want to get um, GPS on my one of my machines. Um, yep. What advice would you give to someone that um, wants to get that on their on their machines and and sort of what are the steps? Uh, really good question. Um, I think at the end of the day, do your research. So find out exactly what you want to try and achieve. Um, do you do you need two D or do you need three D? Um, the difference between 2D and 3D is 3D is going to get you um, a positional accuracy using, um, using a, a GPS model uh, that a surveyor will give you and try and work out what sort of tolerances you're trying to achieve. Um, this is a really, really important question because, um, as mentioned before, tolerance with GPS will get you, say, 15 to 20 mil, plus or minus, where if you would need robotic total station control, um, you're looking at about zero to three millimeters in, 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 in accuracy. So do your research, um, ask your clients or ask whoever you're working for the questions like, um, you know, what do, what, do you, what do you guys want me to do? What sort of tolerances do you want me to try and achieve? And, um, and, and then go from there. And then, um, you can come and talk to your, your friendly C.I. Kennedy advisor, which uh, will also offer you a number of different solutions as well. Mm. Oh, excellent. And then, yeah, so once we've decided what we want and all that, you were, you were saying how you guys do all the installs. So one, do you need the machines brought back to somewhere or do you do them on site? No, so 95% of all of our installs will be done um, on site. Uh, when we say on site, it can be done either um, like on a physical construction site or back at your yard. So um, a lot of our offices around the country don't really have the facility for you to bring the machinery to us. Um, but one of the other common things that we do is we do install equipment um, at manufacturers' yards. So if you're buying a new machine um, from a dealer, then quite often uh, you'll package that uh, machine uh, system up with GPS and we'll go and install it in their yard so uh, when the machine is delivered to you everything's um, everything's done GPS is installed all nice and tidy clean machine ready to go to work mm -hmm. oh. and what do you need to like do any modifications like do you have to cut and weld anything or is everything sort of magnetic or like how, how does that work yeah um we used to have to weld onto the stick and the boom, but uh, not anymore, thankfully. Um, so we now use these really, um, really strong magnets. They're called earth magnets. So that combined with um, a bit of epoxy um, uh, provides a, a really, really strong bond. So the only thing we have to weld on is a tilt bucket or a tilt hitch um, sensor. But um, these days, for the stick and the boom, yeah, there's uh, there's some uh, some really good brackets there, and then um, fabricating for either um, handrail mounts or poles uh, for for your GPS antennas, really straightforward. Um, we provide all of our own equipment, and uh, our team are fully versed in uh, in boiler making. Um, uh, sort of facilities as well as um, as as how to create solutions. Mm. All right. And then once once um, just say if I order the GPS and got it all installed, 
do you offer some type of like training or what happens after that? Yeah, absolutely. So part of the package of, um, of, of the quote will include on-site training. Um, on-site training is done usually at a time of, of delivery or, um, or when, when the machine's handed over. Um, and then, well, or, and, or, uh, when the job goes to its first GPS site. So, uh, training is usually around uh, an hour or two. It's kept pretty simple. Uh, we teach the operator how to, to do the basic functions, upload data, uh, select a surface, uh, select line work, um, turn it off, turn it on, um, and how to just generally check the positioning of the machine to make sure that it's all working correctly. We also provide um, after sales um, support as well. So if you need some more support, you know, a month down the track, we'll come and provide that as part of part of the service. Uh, and we also uh, provide um, phone support for the lifetime of the uh, of the sort of the relationship as well. So some really good um, after sales service and support there. Yeah, excellent. And do these things need like uh, regular calibration? Like I know my little laser level needs to be calibrated every now and then. Is that the same sort of deal with um, GPS? Uh, no, not really. So with uh, with the GPS, with the actual GPS system itself, there's no calibration. Um, GPS is, as I mentioned before, it's it's a bit like the GPS in your car. Uh, there's no calibration required. However, quite often, um, you know, you you're gonna wear the teeth or wear the the blade on your grader or your excavator. Um, so you recalibrate the those buckets or the blade on that. Um, and then there's also software updates as well, which um, can assist in, uh, in the operator's use um, as new uh, features or um, new software updates gets, gets released um, year on year as well. <coughs> and what about limitations? Like, is there anything that might prevent you from being able to put something, put um, machine control on, on an excavator, just say, or a grader? Like, like, can it be too old or something like that? No, not necessarily. Um, as long as the machinery is in good condition, um, we can fit GPS equipment to, to any excavator or grader or dozer. Um, there, there are some limitations around uh, specific valving for, say, a dozer or a grader, but uh, most common these days would be uh, you know, the Cat M series or uh, the John Deere GP series. Um, and both those graders are electro over hydraulic, so it's literally a plug and play sort of system. Um, in terms of um, limitations for using the equipment, um, each limit, each uh, solution, whether it be GPS or robotic total station, does have its limitation. Um, I.e., you can't use GPS if you're working under a tree or if you're working under a bridge or in a in a factory. Because you need to see, you need clear sky above you to see the satellites. Um, with the limitation for robotic total station, it needs to be line of sight. So you need to be able to see the the total station so that it can give you its positional uh, positional heading and so forth. So it's um, there's always going to be limitations, but you know, doing your research and talking to um, your sales uh, sales advisor. Um, that'll give that'll that'll give you the best option for uh, for what you're after. Yeah, I get I get what you mean about the um, total station because there's been a few times where I've been working in my excavator and blocking the um, total station for the grader, and I've had I've had him going off on on the UHF saying, "Get out of the way, I can't yeah, see what I'm doing." Yeah, that's Yep. Or um, a very common one is is the water cart gets in between, and uh, you get a yeah. few um, a few f bombs down the UHF on that one. <laughs> Yeah, I've copped that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Now I know um, it's not a cheap exercise, from what I hear. Um, and being saying that, uh, do you give like finance options and that? Like, because obviously not everyone can afford to just you know fork out such a big amount. Yeah. So look, GPS and machine automation is 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 regarded as as uh, as being a little bit expensive. However. Leica does offer a, a good, better, best philosophy. 
So um, for most applications, we offer three different offerings, um, which range in functionality um, and, of course, price. With regards to finance, uh, yes, we do. We're very, very lucky to offer our own in-house finance through um, CR Kennedy Finance. And this gives the customer the option uh, to either outright purchase um, or hire to buy options. And um, we can spread payments from anywhere from two years uh, through to five years. Uh, so some really good finance options and some really good, um, really good offerings with the, the good, better, best philosophy. What are some of the, I suppose we spoke about limitations, but what, what are some of the challenges that you guys face or even your installers? Are... So, so, I mean, all, all job sites are going to have limitations um, where it comes down to uh, line of sight, uh, you know, whether you can see the satellites, um, whether we can install the equipment. Um, we obviously have to stand the machine down while the, uh, while the machine gets installed. Uh, I mean, for an example, the typical stand down for an excavator would be two days for a full install. Uh, I forgot to ask you, yeah, what does it actually roughly take? Yeah, so, so one to two days, is that what you think on average or yeah, to install? Yeah, usually, usually one and a half to two days for a full install. So the majority of the install will get done on, um, on the first day. And then the second day would normally be the calibration of, uh, of the machine calibration of the buckets, or if it's a grader, calibrating the blade. Um, and then once that's wrapped up, there's a few hours in there for operator training, um, get the machine set up so we're actually receiving GPS corrections um, so we can hand the, hand the machine over, uh, knowing that it's full working and, uh, you know, the client can go to work straight away and start, you know, reaping the benefits of it. I'm noticing on sites that um, you know more and more you've you've got laborers walking around with the little you know rovers and like a uh, uh -huh. uh, systems and you know the sticks, and they're they're checking stuff. You've got surveyors walking around with it. So obviously the future is going to be more and more automation. Like where do, where do you see the future going with um, machine control in particular? Yeah, machine control. It's uh, there's limitless ideas and 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 um, and solutions that that will be coming out in the in the future. Um, Hexagon uh, with Leica uh, have got some really cool products with um, artificial intelligence coming out soon, uh, built into the safety sector. Uh, there'll be artificial intelligence uh, with uh, modeling um, and and as built as well. So. Yeah, the um, the you know, what's coming out in the future. There's some crazy stuff, some really cool technology. Um, if you're really into technology, then you know keep a keep abreast with uh, the current trends and um, and what's happening in the market. Uh, you can sign up to um, Hexagon's Hexagon Heavy Construction um, newsletters, uh, so they come out. Um, they come out monthly with uh, with the latest latest in trends, um, and what you know what they predict is the future being as well. Yeah, all right. So, how do you guys uh, make yourselves stand out, you know, compared to your competitors? Uh, one of our big key points of difference is uh, that we are a family owned and operated business. So, the level of support that you'll get here in uh, Melbourne. Is the same level of support that you'll get in Perth or Brisbane or Adelaide uh, or wherever you are in the country that you might end up doing work. Um, and, and that all comes down to our after-sales service and support. Um, you know, you can have the best product in the world, but if you can't support it, then it's no good. Um, another, another key point of our advantage is uh, the people that we employ. So... All the people that we employ are very passionate. Um, they're industry leaders. Uh, they've either worked in the industry or come from a, a surveying background. Um, and not only do our sales team sell, uh, but they're also fully versed and able to support the product, which is a, which is a huge advantage. Um, we understand that when a piece of machinery is not working, um, you know, the machinery could be stood down or they could, you know, they might not be generating the full potential amount of revenue that, uh, you know, that machine could be could be uh, able to achieve. Um, 
so for the operator or the owner of the company to call support or you know call the sales team whoever it might be they're calling they're going to get answers and they're going to get results fast so very very important hmm. all right and what about do you guys um, attend any expos and that i can see there's a, there's a lot more expos and things coming out these days do you attend any of those things and, and showcase what you've got yeah, absolutely. So in the machine control sector, there's two major shows in the world. Um, there's Bauma, which is in Munich in Germany, um, and it's by far the, the biggest construction show in the world. Absolutely huge. Um, I went to that in uh, October 2022, and um, we were there for six days, and I still did not get around the whole expo. It's that big. Six days. Whoa. Six days. Still couldn't get around it. It's unbelievably, it's unbelievable huge. It's it's really really cool. Um, and the second the second one is Con Expo, which is held in Las Vegas. So um, both those expos um, are every two years, and they um, they're 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 in alternate years. So you're never going to get two and two in one year. And um, you know the Americans they they try and do things good and and big. You know supersize everything. But uh, they certainly can't match uh, what Bauma has to offer. But both of these expos um, we attend um, as, as guests. Uh, we take clients along. Um, usually every, every visit we, we would take up to 15 to 20 clients along. Um, and these clients can be, can be new clients. They can be tier one contractors. Um, everyone from owner operators to 50 plus machines. So, um, you know, you don't have to be a big spender to be invited along. Um, it's, uh, there's obviously criteria that needs to be met to, to receive a, an invite and, uh, and we go from there. But, um, what, another conference that I'm actually luckily enough, uh, very lucky to attend next week is going to be world of concrete, uh, which is also in Las Vegas. And, um, this conference covers everything to do with concrete, uh, specifically for us in machine automation. Uh, we're looking at machinery, um, you know, installing equipment on slip form pavers, uh, barrier pavers, um, concrete, uh, concrete barrier work. Um, so yeah, really up and coming market in, in here in Australia. Um, with, uh, with with 3D paving or 3D concrete concrete paving. So, yeah, really cool. There you go. So it's more than just excavators and uh, skid steers and graders. <laughs> There's a lot yeah, more look, to it. Excavators, dozers, graders, uh, milling machines, uh, asphalt pavers, um, chain trenches, uh, scrapers, tow behinds, um, posi tracks, you name it, uh, in the uh, you name it, we can we can nearly put GPS pretty much on everything that moves to it. Yeah, I did actually speaking. Uh, you just mentioned the the posi tracks and that. I notice a lot more uh, posi tracks with the grader blades and um, GPS on them. Do you, do you think there's going to be a lot more of that as well? Yeah, they've become very very popular in the market now. Um, you know where you where you typically can't get a uh, you know full size grader onto a job site, whether it be a slip road or an on-ramp, off-ramp, maybe a driveway, uh, cul-de-sac, whatever it might be, um, the ability to have your posi track with a grader blade or a box blade on it with 3D automation is becoming very, very popular. Um, it, does take, um, it does take a really good operator to, to operate them. Um, there is quite a bit of methodology in, uh, in laying the material out, but certainly uh, it's become very, very popular. And with the major brands like Bobcat, Cat, John Deere, um, Komatsu, oh, not Komatsu, sorry, uh, Kabalco, um, uh, PosiTrack machines, they're all fully integrated, um, next, near enough plug and play. So um, really easy, really quick install. And we can get an operator up and running within a day with um, with machine automation for a posi track. Yeah. Um, is there anything that you would like to add that I haven't um, asked you about? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, 
I mean, going back to, um, you know, do your research, have a look online. Um, you can check us out on uh, any of the socials. Um, Sarah Kennedy has a uh, uh, Instagram page under uh, Sarah Kennedy Geospatial, which is what Machine Troll um, falls under. Um, if you want to look on the website, if you type in um, Leica Machine Control, the first page that comes up is uh, is the Leica Geosystems page, um, and all the information that you 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 want to know about um, whether it's Total Station or GPS or uh, GPS Foreman kits uh, can all be found there, um, and all of the social pages and websites and so forth they all have an area where um, you can submit your email address and your telephone number where we can give you a call back and, um, and get in touch and provide some advice and, and uh, offer some solutions and hopefully um, sell you some equipment. Excellent, yeah. No, thank you. Um, well, hopefully our listeners have, have learned a lot more about machine control. Um, like they've got an option now. They can come out and see CR Kennedy. So if you've got any questions, I'm sure Nick will be able to help. I'm also going to include links down in the description, so keep an eye out for that. Um, Nick, thank you very much for, for coming on, and um, I hope you enjoy Las Vegas next week. Yeah, thanks, Ivan. Really great to be on here. And Thanks. Thanks for coming on. And to all the listeners, make sure that you uh, follow Earthworks Hub on all socials. Um, like, subscribe, share the shit out of it, like I always say. Um, the more, the merrier. Um, go onto the website if you want any other information as well, earthworkshub.com.au. Uh, thanks for listening. We'll see you in the next one.